What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball channel. And today, we're going to do a preview of the Boston Red Sox. And I got a special guest coming on the program to talk Red Sox. It's a Red Sox expert. He's got his own channel. Robbie Hyde here. Everybody, go check out the links down below. I'm going to put links to his channel. Make sure you go give him a visit. Give him a subscriber. And we'd really appreciate that. But go ahead, Robbie, and go ahead and uh, give your thoughts on the Red Sox. And uh, yeah, go ahead, whatever you got. Yeah, so let's uh, let's talk about last year a little bit. Um, you know, pretty disappointing year, third in the AL East. Uh, you know, surprisingly, I mean, well, not surprisingly, but their offense last year, they were fourth in offense last year. They had one of the best offenses. They're actually a very good fielding team, too. They ranked seventh in fielding percentage. Um, their problem was the pitching. Um, a lot of people early on, well, I think everyone noticed the bullpen, was just really out of whack. There was just no it's Craig Kimbrell left. Like well, they didn't bring him back. So they went with a closer by committee and there was no stability in that bullpen whatsoever. It was all over the place. They had different guys closing. Um and then, you know, ended up being a strength in the second half of the season for them. And then the starting pitching was what was weak for them in the second half. So, you know, guys like Chris Sale, like pretty much a lost season for him. I mean there was just nothing. They had, they had Eduardo Rodriguez, a very good season for him, a breakout season, 19 wins. Uh, but other than that, there wasn't really much. I mean, the bullpen did stabilize in the second half, but, but by that point, they had blown so many, so many games in the first half. They blew, I think they actually led the league in blown saves last year. I think they had 32 blown saves. I, off the top, man, that was a lot of, they, they were blown so many games. It was really frustrating. But I think everyone's kind of waiting to talk about the the one move right now which was yeah yeah that yeah. was a that was a crazy <laughs> one I think most Red Sox fans are pretty upset I, I haven't even I don't even know how you felt about it but yeah go ahead you know it's funny I'm actually probably the only person in, in all of Boston that's okay with it I'm not mad about it I'm I've been a Red Sox fan for so long now probably just you know however long you've been a Giants fan I have seen all of the guy, like Nomar Garcia Parra, that guy was an icon in Boston. Uh, when they traded him away and they won a World Series. Granted, the, you know, Nomar, when he got traded, wasn't the same kind of a player as Mookie Betts when he got traded. But still, Red Sox players, you know, they, people have come and gone and they've still been able to win championships. So, you know, a lot of people are mad with ownership. Um, you know, I, I, under, I get it. I, I get it, you know, because, I mean, you're not going to get a Mookie Betts every day. You know, it's, no, it, it was, you know, it's, it sucked a little bit, but I think with me, um, I'm someone personally, I just look to what's next. That's just how I've always been just in life. And you know what? It's, it's a, a tough pill to swallow. He's, you know, great player, but you just got to move on. And at the end of the day, you know, you, you can sit here and cry about it all you want, but I trust, the, the you know the ownership group that you know they brought four world series to boston since they've taken over i understand it's you know not the easiest of moves but he wasn't going to resign at the end of the day he was not coming back he that guy was looking for over 400 million the red sox philosophy they have never given a player that much money of course it, it's it, it's a little hard to see it but at the end of the day we got some good pieces back we got alex verdugo I mean, yeah, you've, exactly. you definitely saw a lot of him last year. Um, he's a three-win player. I mean, he's dealing with a bit of a back thing right now. But I did a video on, you know, just some immaturity issues that he's had in the past. You know, Boston is a pressure cooker of a town, you know. So I think if he just keeps himself in check, I think that's going to be a good player for them. And they got Jeter Downs, um, second baseman of the future. There's nothing extravagant about him. He's just a really solid guy, like hits well, runs well. He gets, 
you know, he has decent power. He just does a lot of things well. He's decent in the field. He actually had a terrible spring training game the other day against uh, Northeastern, I believe. I think he made. Oh, really? I think he made a couple errors, but whatever. You know, it's. I think he is going to be great for them in a couple years. Uh, they also got Connor Wong. He Connor Wong actually has a decent bat. Um, he actually has only been a catcher for about two years now, and. His caught stealing percentage was pretty decent last year. So, you know, there's some intrigue with him. Um, I'm not sure how far he'll get. Maybe possibly a backup catcher. You know, a lot of people, the one thing you hear in Boston, well, pay Mookie. Pay him. You can pay him. Well, here's the thing. You know, of course, the Red Sox can pay those luxury tax fees. Of course they can. They have the money. But last year, they paid over $13 million in luxury tax fees. They signed Mitch Moreland one year with a player or one year with a team option for $3 million. And that's four Mitch Moreland's right there. You know what I mean? Like it's, you're throwing yeah. money into the trash basically. And so now they've, now they've reset that luxury tax. Now they can look ahead to free agency next year, a couple years from now. I, there are some cons uh, obviously with trading Mookie. He's one of the best players in the game. I just, I mean, personally, everyone might think I'm crazy, but I think there's more pros to, to trading him. And you just have, at the end of the day, you just have to see how everything unfolds. Yeah, you got some good players, and looks like is that about pretty close to what you expect to see next year or this yeah. year. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, I definitely think Ben Intendi is going to lead off. I think he is due for a bounce back year. That guy has so much talent. He has a great bat. I th- I think he's going to be decent as a leadoff hitter. You know, a part of me would love to see what Rafael Devers can do in the leadoff spot. That guy just hits. You know, he gets on base. Um, but the good thing about this lineup is that you can move guys around in this lineup and it's still going to be really productive. I mean, you could even, I mean, Christian Vasquez hit, I think, 22 home runs last year. I mean, shoot, even some days you could bat him fifth, maybe even clean up, you know, if, it, if there's a guy he's good against. Um, you know, Moreland could even hit fifth there. You could even have Verdugo lead off. You know, yeah. that's, Verdugo's a guy like he's a really good all around player and he just gets on base. So there's a lot of flexibility with this lineup. I think Peraza right there, I, I could see him starting at second base some days. Uh, I think I think Chavis is going to get the, the the opening day nod there. Peraza's coming in. You know, it, it'll be interesting to see what he can do. I think he's going to be better off. He had a pretty down year last year. I think he was in the 230s with his average. Um, I, I, I think he'll be decent off the bench. I mean, Granted, this guy led the league in hits in the National League a couple years yeah. ago. Um, you know, I, I think a bat like that, if you can, you know, work something out with his with his swing mechanics or whatever it may be, he could be a decent bat off that bench and, you know, obviously fill in in a few different positions. Hey, he even pitched last year too, so. You no know. doubt. And what so, do you think about the Kevin Pillar pickup? You know, it's, it's funny. I was just thinking, I'm like, oh, I wonder what you're going to think about the Kevin Pillar. Uh, yeah. So. You know, Kevin Pilari, he's an interesting player because he can hit you some home runs. He can drive him runs, but he doesn't get on base very well. He didn't get it on Not base really. like 286 last year, yeah. 285, something yeah. like that. But that guy just, he's not a gold glove guy. I, I think he used to be. I think he had a defensive war in like the like 1.5 or something last year. He was That's decent. Because he looked yeah. really good from the eyeball test. He looked awesome. But Totally, know. totally. And uh, that guy is just going to, that guy is just a, Boston kind of guy just play he kind of reminds me of Trot Nixon in a way uh, yeah uh, Kevin Pilar he's a guy that's just gonna play hard I think Boston's really gonna like him um just a hard-nosed guy he's gritty just plays yeah he's a I think he's a great addition I, I really like that signing that's awesome yeah is anybody else coming off the bench pretty good for y'all that I'm yeah that uh, talked about or? yeah you got so you got Peraza we got Pilar it's it's well with Verdugo right now he's probably not going to start uh, the season opening day he's going to be probably on the DL but uh, so Pilar probably coming in there there's a uh, guy in Pawtucket I keep forgetting his name oh uh, Zhu Wei Lin yeah I mean, he's, uh, I mean he's not going to be like he's not going to you know break down walls but he's he's a guy that can play you know a few different positions that he can play second play a little short he can play some third. Um, oh, and they signed Jonathan Lucroy too. Lucroy was in the MVP voting back in 2016, I believe. Uh, that's a that's another great guy where he could maybe come in, be that backup catcher. They also traded for Kevin Ploiecki. I think he was on the Mariners last year. 
I believe. Okay. I'm not quite sure, but he's a backup catcher candidate as well. Um, Christian Vasquez will obviously be the starter, but you know there's going to be a bit of a competition in spring training for the catching position. There's CJ Chatham. He's down in uh, AAA. I'm not sure if he's going to really get a lot of time, but I could see him coming up. I, I think the bench is okay. I don't think it's you know greatest bench in the world, but and then this is a possible rotation. I don't know. Chris Sale, Eduardo Rodriguez, Nathan yeah. Elvaldi, Martin Perez, yeah. Matt Hall. Is that close? Well, I, th- I think Matt Hall, uh, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm thinking here. Um, definitely Sale, Erod, Ivaldi, Perez, definitely see that. Um, Hall, I think that there's been a lot of talk of the fifth spot being uh, using an opener. Uh, Heim Bloom with the Rays, he was really big on using an opener with them. Oh, um, okay, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely some guys where they can open some games. Uh, there's Josh Taylor. Marcus Walden, Colton Brewer. There's also Darwin's and Hernandez. They do have some guys that can open some games. Um, but I definitely think someone like a Josh Taylor, he could possibly compete for that fifth spot in spring training. Yeah, he, he was pretty decent out of that bullpen last year. It just wasn't okay. the thing about the bullpen. It was just such a forgotten thing last year. Everyone just gave up on the bullpen. But they had some – and it's funny, at the end of the year, they actually had, I think, like a top 10 bullpen when it came to uh, – the wins above replacement, like combined. Oh, really? Yeah, Josh Taylor's a guy. I, I definitely think Marcus Walden. That guy had, I believe, like nine or ten wins last year out of the bullpen. He's a guy, possibly. I definitely, I, I, I just feel like an opener is what's going to happen. That's yeah. some of your bullpen there, obviously, Workman. Uh. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think that uh, it, it's, it's nice knowing their roles who is going to be where in that bullpen workman right now he'll be the closer going to opening day but one guy i want people to keep an eye on is darwin's and hernandez he is he's a guy that has really good stuff i think if i've always viewed brandon workman as like a setup guy all like uh, just because he he was really good for the red sox in 2013 when they won the world series he was really solid in that postseason but then like ever since then he was dealing with injuries he was up and down you didn't really hear about brandon workman yeah. constantly going up and down to triple a and back to the major leagues and it was but it was, so it was really nice to see workman do well i do wonder if teams are going to adjust to him a little this year and it i think he's going to be fine but i definitely would keep an eye on darwin's in there he's he's a guy he can strike out some guys and then uh you know matt barnes he's a perfect perfect setup guy that guy he tried closing some games last year oh my goodness it was like blown save city for, but for some reason oh. when he pitched the seventh and eighth the guy was like just lights out brazier oh, a really yeah. down year last year he was solid for them in 2018 i think he had some problems with his command in 2018 but he had good enough stuff to where he could get by but i think that really bit him last year he just was going down to AAA a lot. Heath Henbury's a solid guy. Um, oh, they also traded for Austin Bryce uh, from the Marlins. That guy was pretty good last year. Uh, he had, I, th- I think, around 40 innings. He had an ERA and like a, around like a 3.4 or something like that. Um, really solid guy out of that bullpen. Yeah. That's what Heim Bloom is really good at. He's known for finding these kind of guys, like just – not names that just pop off the you know the screen, but like these guys that can just give you solid you know production. Austin, yeah, he was good for the Marlins last year. I mean, you never heard about him because obviously the Marlins mm. what won two games last year. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know there are he some. Said, he said Heath Embry. He used to be a Giants prospect. Yeah, and yeah, he was really good at that. You know, with us, but ended yeah. up moving him. So I don't know. It seems like it's been a while. I don't know if he's still. How he's doing, but apparently he's still all right. No, he's uh, he's a pretty solid guy. He's going to give you an ERA, you know, high threes, low fours. He's not okay. gonna be like your top setup guy, but he he'll, yeah, he'll be you know serviceable. I, I, I like the bullpen this year. I'm glad they just have some stability heading into the season. When, it's like Josh Osich. You guys got <laughs> he used to be on the Giants too. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a guy that can give some decent innings, um, but definitely the top guys are looking at Workman, definitely Barnes. Brazier is going to be interesting, um, but again, really look out for Darwin's, and I, I don't know why, I just, I, I really liked his stuff. He got hit a little last year, but 
when he when some of those guys that he would get just strikeouts on, I was like, God, this guy has got some good stuff. Yeah. So I think, and another big, it's a good move from the Red Sox was not not adding a player, but uh, putting Dave Bush as the pitching coach. He's very big on analytics. He's He's going to be, I think, very good for that pitching staff. He's always known for the analytics. Awesome. So. And we haven't even talked about your manager. I guess you got a new no, manager yeah. this year. That was a big, I mean, all the, I mean, all the other stuff going on. It's, yeah. You know, that, that, that was such a big thing when that happened. And then all the other stuff started coming out. Yeah. Um, Rennicky, right? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I like Rennicky. He's a, just seems, you know, he seems like a guy that, yeah, you just don't mind being around, you know, like, Seems like a pretty nice guy. He's been around for a couple years now. He knows the team. He knows the players. He knows, you know, just everything going on. He was he was Coors bench coach. So I think that's a great guy. Managerial experience. You know, I think my heart was hoping for Veritech. I think a lot of Red Sox fans were hoping for Jason Veritech. But, um, you know, it's... I think that I think it was the right move. It was the safest move. They did wait a while. Just they had to kind of wait on what was going to, you know, go on. They still haven't even uh, revealed the what's yeah, going still on. Waiting. Yeah. So, but um, I read somewhere that they most likely asked Major League Baseball, "Hey, can we go ahead with this guy? How is he in this report? Is he whatever?" Right. And, they, and pretty much they gave the the thumbs up for it without revealing anything so you know cool. Renicky just seems like a good guy and i you know he's got great experience he knows the players i think it's gonna i think it was the best move i'm not sure how long he'll be the manager i don't know if you know jared carabas he's basically like the number one red Sox fan he's all over twitter but he's you know pulling for alex core to, to come back next year you know oh, really? mostly, yeah oh yeah um, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jared Grabus is an interesting one. Um, he is a lifelong Red Sox fan. Look him up on Twitter. This guy is all okay, over. I will, yeah. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's very outspoken as a Red Sox fan. He was actually the governor of Red Sox Nation at one point. Oh, um, wow. But he is like the, the leader of the uh, free Alex Cora movement. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think they want to deal with that. I don't think they want to. Yeah. I'm well, makes me wonder questions and controversy, and if he'd so, be willing to come no, back as a bench coach or something, and then uh, move his way back gradually, maybe. Yeah. But but I do. I guess you know. Again, I do wonder how how long Renicky will. You know, I know obviously he'll be the manager this year, but again, uh, good probably move. just one season, maybe. I don't. Know. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But yeah, sounds good. I uh, just want to also, if you could, do you have any predictions for the AL East? Or so. Um, you know, my goal with my channel was because, uh, you know, I, I've dabbled a little bit in the, the YouTube realm now for a couple months. And the one thing I noticed, I f- uh, not too much, but I have noticed some bias a little bit. Um, there's some there's some channels out there that I've noticed where they're a fan of that team. They they want to pick that team to win the World Series. Yeah. Um, oh, I see it. I got the Giants last, so I'm, not too- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually working on a video right now. Um I have, I think the Giants rank 25th right now. So, yeah. um, but right now, I, you know, I don't know. I have the Red Sox getting the second wild card. That's what I have as of right now. I believe their pitching is going to be decent. I don't think it's going to be anything off the charts. I think Chris Sale, he, I think he's going to have a decent year. I think he's going to be fine. So I think as long as they manage him this year, like I said, Dave Bush was huge for for that pitching staff in Boston to bring him aboard. And, you know, he was dealing with some injuries last year, but he's coming into spring training now feeling good. Well, actually, he was sick. I think he had like a really? little bit of pneumonia or something. Um, but, you know, health, you know, arm wise, he said he's feeling good. I'm going to expect anywhere from like 15 to 17 wins from sale. I think he's going to have a decent year. I think their pitching staff is going to be decent. Their offense is going to be good. Of course, they lost Mookie Betts. There was a, about a seven-win player right there, but they really brought in some pieces that can – they're not going to fill the void that Mookie Betts left. No. But I think well, I like Alec Verdugo a lot. So, um, yeah. Especially as a starter, he's going to be more confident. He knows that yeah. he's the guy out there. So Yeah, he just yeah. yeah he just needs to keep himself in check. That's all. And right now I have the Red Sox winning 90 games. 
I think the Rays, I think they're going to finish with 89. That's just as of right now. I like the Red Sox. I think their bullpen is going to be solid this year. They're going into this season with a stable bullpen. They still have one of the best offenses in baseball. They actually have some guys now in the minors that could help out. I, I think this team, a lot of people are writing them off. And yeah, but I think their pitching is going to bounce back. I see them getting the second wild card. And we'll see what happens from there. Right now, I see, at the moment, I see the A's and the Red Sox in the wild card game. That's, yeah. At the moment, that's what I'm seeing. Again, I'm really trying not to sound biased. I'm really trying to look at it from a point where, like, because I, I don't, I don't, I will not be afraid to admit if, if I think this team will, will not even win 82 games. I, I will be glad to admit if they are, are below 500. I'm the first guy to say, you know, I, they're not going to be good this year. So, but I think this team has a lot of, they have a lot of good things still. And I think they're going to surprise some people. I think yeah. they're going to off to a decent start. I think they, I think a lot of people have written them, like I've said a few times, they've written them off. And I think in a way, gives them a little extra juice, you know, like, come on, you know, yeah, Mookie was great, but we're a good team. You know, I, I think they have that bit of chip on their shoulder heading into this season. They just have to pitch. I think they need to get off to a good start with this pitching. They need to get some momentum out of the gates. That's the key is they're starting pitching this year. Yeah. Okay. Sounds pretty good. Good luck in 2020 to the Red Sox. Yeah, and you any too. other time, jump in. Anytime you want to do another one, just let me know. Yeah, man. Absolutely. This was fun. Thank you so much. All Have right. a good night, man. All right. All right. See ya. See ya. Peace. So that's Robbie Hyde. Appreciate him coming on and talking some Red Sox, getting ready for 2020. And the Red Sox looking pretty good he's got him winning the second wild card slot so we'll see i'm gonna have my predictions out really soon appreciate everybody jumping on today checking out this video really do appreciate it y'all have a fantastic day hit the subscribe button below and also go to robbie hyde's channel and hit his subscribe button as well talk to you next time see ya